working on the 2J mower again today, which means pulling more parts from the Jag. So I'm gonna try and drop this whole front subframe because like the rear, it's actually quite modular and all one piece. Like the A-arms, it's a double A-arm setup, which is pretty cool. And they all mount to the subframe. The only thing that bolts to the body out of the whole thing is the shock, which is super easy to make a shock mount somewhere. If you're wondering what's up with this Jag and this crazy intake manifold and stuff that's going on, there'll be a link in the description for the video where we built this thing. It was it was a fun time, uh, but it runs like crap. So uh, we're gonna turn it into other cool things. Take a quick break in game because this video is sponsored by State of Survival. It's a zombie themed survival strategy game for mobile. In the game you can grow and design your settlement, upgrade all the buildings, expand your territory. You can recruit heroes and train your troops to fight in battles. This is my favorite hero because he has these auto turrets that help you in battles. State of Survival has multiple game modes. You can play player versus player, kingdom versus kingdom, and player versus environment. There's a lot to do in this game. This game has a full-on story mode, and you can join alliances. We just started one. Our alliance is grind hard, so definitely get the game and join our alliance. If you are new to this game, use our creator code, that's GHPCSOS, and you'll get 20,000 bio caps and a rare hero, Rusty. And it's a limited number, so first come, first serve. And if you download the game using our link in the description, you'll be automatically entered to win a giveaway. And we're going to give away 20 $50 Amazon gift cards. So definitely check that out. The link's below. Use our codes. But for now, let's get back to building. So it turns out both motor mounts were completely broken. So uh, the only thing holding the subframe up was that power steering line. This one, which was hooked over something else on the, in on the engine and uh, this brake line. So I just kind of propped it up and undid those things one at a time and it dropped right out. So that's cool. It's a really, really simple subframe. Yeah, no kidding. Which is perfect for what we're doing. Now we even have power steering, plenty of space for a 2J right here. And then these things, we can lop those off wherever we need and just make it rigid to the chassis. And so now when we get back to the Jag build, look at all that room for improvement. Got the uh, front end out of the Jag. It's uh, all cleaned up and in the shop. So now it's time to swap it out for that front end and figure out how far apart these things need to be. I'm at 
the uh, hold stuff up and stare at it part of the process. <laughs> it's always a fun part. We've got our first piece of chassis kind of assembled. Can even uh, throw both floorboards on this time. I got both of these halves tacked onto this cross member here. They're square this way to the cross member. They're square this way. This section here is all square to itself, which is cool because this is a big square <laughs> that I can then measure off of to get the front uh, you know, lined up. I'm hoping today to connect the rear to the front. I'm gonna start by reinforcing this bit so that it's not wobbly. Work on making some frame rails that connect from this point out to this front cross member. measured and checked many, many different points uh, because there's no easy way to get it all square and straight, but I think it's straight enough. So now I just have to not bump anything until I have it tacked in place <laughs> and then double check it after I tack it. But. this angle, cut it down to size, made it fit, and then added a piece on the bottom to make it a C-channel, or like the back half of this tractor chassis. <laughs> anyway, um, I may box it in later or brace it or whatever to make it, you know, extra stiff, but um, for now that's plenty good. Um, I just gotta add in a little brace there. And right here, I had to cut out a big chunk for the uh, steering input and to brace it back up I've got another little cross section of that pipe and then I'm just gonna weld that in there like that which clears the u-joint and is extra sturdy
Looking like a truck, this is crazy. <laughs> oh yeah. It'll be crazy to do power to weight ratios of this versus this when we're done. That's gonna be insane. Not the final wheel and tire fitment. <laughs> gonna go for the rusty boys over here, but that <laughs> does look pretty sick. That looks awesome. <laughs> And we'll um, be able to whip it in a bunch of different modes. We have so many yeah. different wheel and tire setups. <laughs> yeah, we do. Like, we could throw the ones from the Ute on here. They're the same bolt pattern as these, even. Oh, yeah, that'd be sick, too. Yeah, those would be actually a lot better for, like, what it is, you know? So, I'm just going to make a couple of really basic little brackets to uh, bolt the engine in place temporarily. And then uh, we'll set it down so it's actually a roller. <laughs> Oh man, is that cool? Yeah, that is super cool. It's a roller, or it would be if this brake over here wasn't completely seized. Also, you can see there's uh, still a little bit of flex in my chassis here. a rolling chassis and it looks awesome these tires look super cool on here obviously they're not the like you know the main look we're going for but it's a good look i think <laughs> the suspension is incredibly stiff as you might imagine since it's from a giant car and now there's no weight on it at all next time we'll get working on uh actually mounting the engine and trams and then uh beefing up the frame because Right now, it uh, holds itself together here and its own weight, and that's about it.